Hello, this is Dr. Bob Fetragas. Today we're looking at various sides of the strange Iowa caucus debacle and the shadowy organization or group known as Shadow. Uh, also, New Hampshire primary results and Nevada's Democratic uh, debate. Uh, what really happened? Who was the winner? And are they going to have a debacle there as well? Plus, we'll talk about a trust vote event this weekend on election integrity here in Ohio's capital city. So stay tuned, and we'll see you on the other side of the news. Death and hatred to mankind. Poisoning their brainwashed minds. Oh, Lord, yeah. All right, this is uh, Bob Fetrakis back in the studio, and I'm glad to have you here with us. As usual, well, not per usual, I'm actually not joined by the other guy on the other side tonight. He's not feeling well. It's not the norovirus uh, or other things, uh, but hopefully he'll be back next week doing other guy things. So, uh, we like to thank... Trust vote for its support. We had a very successful uh, event at the Vanderelli Room. Great place to do politics. It's uh, an art gallery, as many of you know, uh, and it's uh, downright neo hippie, psychedelic, and groovy. So uh, many things went on there. Uh, let's take a look. All right, trust vote. Nonprofit that wants to protect our elections. They sponsor the event at the Vanderelli Room, working with the freepress.org and Audit AZ. Here's one of the speakers. You may perhaps you recognize him. So we no, want to make sure that uh, students uh, are checking their registration and take an electronic picture of it. So if they're forced to vote provisionally, They've got actual proof they were on the roll. Also, there's election night monitoring another project, right? Uh, uh, we do this with a lot of people from across the country. You can actually monitor the Board of Election voting totals uh, in real time. Uh, also, we want election observers at the Board of Elections. If you're working with candidates, a candidate can have observers uh, at the poll, but we need to monitor 88 counties and record their sequence of voting. So we really need to monitor these. And Wade Rathke was there, one of the legendary organizers in U.S. history. Many of you know Acorn was involved from 1971 forward in voter registration. Uh, from the very beginning, when we began in Little Rock, 2008 when I uh, left ACORN and we were registering more than a million new voters every cycle. But part of what's been going on in more recent years and during that period was an, an effort to suppress voters by purging. Uh, 20 years ago where a targeted letter would be sent to particular zip codes that were identified racially or ethnically to try to determine whether or not you could take those particular voters off the rolls. The Ohio Voter Project, and we've reached out and created this partnership for the Voter Purge Project, which is based on his ability to figure out how these pieces come together and create a pure list that we can almost immediately query and find out results in terms of anticipating and responding to purges. So we're gonna to try to figure out on the, on the field test, what the truth of that is. We're doing it in Ohio, but we're also going to see once we do it in Ohio, we'll do it in North Carolina, Pittsburgh, and uh, uh, Detroit as well to see if we can determine what the percentage of error is in purges and drops. All right, also there was a good friend of mine, John Brakey of Audit AZ. He wants to save those digital images so we can audit the election results.
Americans united for democracy, integrity, and transparency. How to make elections transparent, trackable, and publicly verified. Digital images are now the industrial standard for voting in the United States. 80% of every vote counted in the 2020 election will be counted on a digital scanner. In Ohio, looking at the numbers, uh, right now, your state is 82% using ballot images. And this is last October. Uh, ESNS had 63% of your market. Uh, Dominion had 13 and uh, Heartland Civic and another small company have the rest of it. And then you've got the old junk, which really is junk because it left no evidence behind how it works. We fix the black box to make it transparent. Uh, we're in a situation that we uh, have both parts of problems. We still got voter suppression, uh, playing with the databases, the propaganda, you know, the misreporting, you know, all these things certainly play a bit. Well, one of the reasons you need groups like Audit AZ standing for Arizona there, and you need events like the Election Integrity uh, Conference that was put on by Trust Vote is because of shadowy groups with names like Shadow, who come up with uh, apps uh, that are totally incapable of getting the job done. To complicate the matter, uh, the man who uh, benefited the most by the messed up app in vote count was Buttigieg. And his campaign gave $42,500 to the development of the app that messed up and overcounted his votes. Uh, Biden also chipped in a small amount of money, uh, $1,225. But Biden, the only thing he got out of it is uh, by the app acting up, no one knew he went down to one of the worst defeats for a predicted front runner in the history of American voting. So keep that in mind. Also going over to New Hampshire, uh, interesting developments there. Uh, the DNC now seems to be heavily into suppressing uh, votes. They've adopted the fame Goo Goo voting suppression technique, Paul Weyrich of the Republican Party, uh, who back in 79, 80, when Reagan was emerging, said we need to suppress voters, and he meant black voters. In, uh, in New Hampshire, the Democratic National Committee is allowing the state party there uh, to deregister students or not count them as citizens of New Hampshire if they don't bring their car to school and re-register it in the state. Utter, absolute nonsense, voter suppression. So students at uh, uh, New Hampshire uh, universities and those at Dartmouth uh, cannot sign up uh, to vote in the state of New Hampshire. And here's the real reason why, because they disproportionately were voting for Bernie. So uh, Buttigieg ends up uh, with less popular votes than Bernie in both Iowa and New Hampshire, but he ends up with two more delegates, courtesy of the DNC, the Iowa, and the New Hampshire Democratic parties. So you can't trust moderate mainstream Democrats. You can't trust the DNC to protect the grassroots votes of the people. We've got to learn to protect our own votes. We've got to be able uh, in the upcoming primaries to make sure you check your registration. You've got to make sure uh, that you take a picture of it on your phone or tablet because we know what they're up to. They're targeting the progressive uh, voting base. They're targeting the poor. They're targeting the elderly. They're targeting minorities. They're targeting college students. And they're trying to make sure that they don't uh, get to vote. 
So that's why they come up with these rules, like if your car is not registered in this state, even though you're living in New Hampshire now, you're off at college, you can't vote. Uh, we can't allow these Republican right-wing voter tactics to be embraced by the DNC. Uh, same thing they began to do in 2016. They'll do anything to try and get you not to vote for progressive candidates, and particularly the Democratic Socialists, uh, Bernie Sanders. Uh, you know, Trump's out there equating them with uh, communists, uh, which were predictable. Don't fall for that. The communists are the undemocratic socialists. Bernie Sanders believes in the Constitution. He believes in the election. The ones that don't are Donald Trump and the Republicans and the DNC. They're the ones that are contemptuous about letting the people vote. Bernie Sanders is a democratic, constitutional socialist who believes in free and fair elections and civil rights for all people. Uh, the supporters of Hillary Clinton really didn't embrace that in 2016. They used every method they could to try to suppress Sanders' votes. There's this tremendous fear that Sanders, as the representative of the people, will bring us our revolution a real revolution that redistributes the wealth and reestablishes democracy in this country. So those are my words. Uh, stay tuned. You got Jimmy Dore coming up. He's got some words for you. Pay careful attention to what he's saying. Hi, I'm Bob Petrakis, Editor-in-Chief of the Columbus Free Press. Free Press Network began fighting against the oligarchs in 1970 with the Columbus Free Press newspaper. Papers started on the Ohio State University campus as a reaction to the Vietnam War and the Kent State killings. Columbus Free Press is one of the oldest independent, investigative, activist papers in the United States. We were the first Western newspaper to expose the killing fields in Cambodia to get a reporter behind the scenes at Wounded Knee, and we've outed neo-Nazis. We were the first gay rights paper. We cover police brutality and government corruption. We lead the current election integrity movement. Free press reporters and volunteers investigated the theft of the 2004 presidential election. We've been exposing the vulnerabilities of electronic voting machines through our reporting and books ever since. We've documented the names of more than 2 million voters deleted from the Ohio voting rolls. Many of them re-registered when we made those lists public. Our congressional testimony and lawsuits have served to contain voter fraud and preserve democracy in our country. Building on decades of telling truth to power, we have developed the Indie Media Center of the Free Press Network. Currently, we publish a monthly newspaper two websites, two community radio stations, WGRN 94.1 FM and WCRS on both 92.7 and 98.3 FM. Now a video podcasting, the multimedia studio provides the new media soapbox that the Central Ohio community needs. Reporting workshops and training is available for budding journalists and content makers. We are strategically located in the capital city of the United States' key battleground state. Remember, as Ohio goes, so goes the nation. We need your help to keep muckraking journalism alive in the heartland. Help us fight against fraud, corruption, and injustice. You can keep the Free Press Network growing with a one-time donation or become a monthly patron. We have a variety of benefits set up for almost any level of support. Help us comfort the afflicted while we afflict the comfortable. So the DNC, if you follow my show, had announced on Thursday that they were taking over the counting of the votes. 
After the 62% was reported, the DNC then, I'm, I'm like, why is the DNC taking over the counting of the votes? Doesn't anybody in Iowa know how to count votes? <laughs> so then I, we showed you how they were taking votes from Bernie, giving them to Deval Patrick, Tom Steyer, and Pete Buttigieg. I showed you that. The headline of my video was DNC caught flipping votes for Buttigieg. And whatever they did, it was to boost him. And so then this place called Lead Stories, which is working for, for Zuckerberg at Facebook, they take my video and they say, fake news. DNC did not caught flipping votes. for, And then here it is, misleading headline. Not only that, but under here, it says, read all about the latest hoaxes, fake news, and pranks. So they, there's nothing fake about my f***ing reporting. Not a thing. They're quibbling with my headline. That's a quibble. That's not a hoax or f***ing fake news. And they f***ing know it, but the word is out that Jimmy Dore is onto their f***ing, and people are starting to listen to him, so we have to get these suckers out to make sure we discredit him. They go, while Dor, while Dor pointed out that Buttigieg for a time, for a time, had 10 more delegates than the numbers Swartz maintained that the former mayor had. For a time? You mean they got caught? You mean they gave 10 more delegates to Buttigieg, right. then they got f***ing caught doing it, and then they corrected it after they got f***ing caught, you piece of propagandist liar so this is what would come up I, so I said Facebook news equals fake news they are telling people that the accurate information in my news report about vote flipping in Iowa is false my news report was flagged by a gay name, guy named Ryan Cooper who works for CNN and supports Buttigieg this is how the establishment rigs elections now the guy who's the editor of that lead story website that debunking my story, his name is Alan Duke, right? Editor-in-chief, lead stories. What the f Where did you come from, you piece of shit? <laughs> you f***ing Facebook hall monitor? What f***ing intelligence community asshole tapped you to do this, right? Okay, he goes... More fake news from Jimmy Dore, not surprising. Ryan Cooper does not work for CNN. He works for the lead stories. Also, the claims he supports Buttigieg is made up. Do better, Jimmy. Well, the was a director of programming at CNN International. You know that, you and what this guy says, while it's true that Ryan Cooper does not currently work for CNN, oh. Ryan did work for CNN at one time. Alan's omission of this detail might mislead people into thinking that Ryan never worked for CNN. Thinking Ryan still worked for CNN may just be an honest mistake. <laughs> Since he worked for them for 20 years, and he was their international director of programming to say he doesn't work there is misleading you fact-checking That's right. I go here is Alan Duke who went from the military to CNN and now is current Facebook propagandist working directly for Zuckerberg to boost Buttigieg by smearing anyone telling the truth about the cheating in Iowa. We are over the target and taking lots of flack from the intelligence community lackeys. There you go. So that's that story. All right. So uh, you heard it from Jimmy Dore. So there's uh, always a question. Uh, about who's attacking who. Uh, many of you know when Harvey Wasserman uh, and I uh, brought up the issue of the votes from Ohio being counted in 2004 in Chattanooga, Tennessee, which we proved in factual court documents in the King Lincoln Brunsville case versus Ken Blackwell, uh, we had many of the progressive newspapers the nation, for example, and Mother Jones attack us. And a lot of it uh, is they simply don't want to admit that it's easy to hack 
and manipulate elections. And you can also do it on tablets and phones with these new apps. So the uh, other question is what happened in the 2016 uh, primary? If you look at uh, various states, uh, be it California or Ohio uh, or uh, New York for that example, uh, for another example, uh, think about what happened in New York when uh, hundreds of thousands of uh, registered voters were deregistered, purged in Brooklyn, where, uh, which is Bernie's uh, home neighborhood uh, there in New York. Also in California, minivan, the so-called application given to both Hillary Clinton and the Bernie campaign, uh, began to malfunction, but basically just for the Bernie newly registered voters. So, uh, and again, many of them were registered in the wrong party, the American Independence Party, uh, when they wanted to be independents and cross over and vote. So, uh, if you want to check out award-winning journalism, uh, try the freepress.org and the columbusfreepress.com, as well as our monthly newspaper. Uh, here's some of the things we've reported over the years. In 2004, uh, we're the ones that broke the news. Again, I said this earlier, broke the news that the final vote tally in Ohio was counted by a born-again right-wing Christian, Jeff Averbeck, in Chattanooga, Tennessee, who worked for a company called Smart Tech. It was a fact. And not only that, they planned to move it out 14 months in advance. We have the contract. It was part of our case, King Lincoln, Brunsville. No one contested it uh, at the Secretary of State's office where Ken Blackwell was co-chairing the Bush-Cheney re-election while running the state election. Uh, 2008, uh, it was the Free Press that was the only organization that had all 1.1 million uh, voters who were purged in Ohio. Uh, not surprisingly, they were purged from the inner cities of Toledo, from Cincinnati, from Cleveland. Between 2004 and 2008, the core voters, the poor, the elderly, college students, and minorities, particularly blacks, were deregistered from the voting rolls. The Free Press broke that story and also made those names available to people, groups like ACORN, uh, as well as the Obama campaign. Uh, for that matter, the Republicans could have used them as well. So, I want to uh, also briefly note that in uh, 2012, we broke the story with the help of a Republican whistleblower in the Secretary of State's office. John Houston was the man at the time who was Secretary of State. We found out that there were secret patches going to be put on to help, quote, count votes. They were fixing the uh, reporting, and I do mean fix it. So 2012, we won an award for that. 2016, we made it public that they were shutting off the security features on the machines, the audit log, the, and they weren't saving the digital images, essential to recount elections. Well, again, I want to remind folks that they can pick up a copy of the Columbus Free Press in Columbus, Ohio, anywhere on the map you're seeing on the screen. And if you click Free Press Map link, uh, the description uh, below will lead you to the promised land, where there you will be liberated by picking up a copy of the Columbus Free Press. And uh, again, make sure you share it with your neighbors. And finally, it looks like we're coming up close to time here. Uh, we've got over 300 locations where you can pick up a paper. And this is community-supported newspaper, just like you're listening to community-powered 
and supported news. You're listening to WGRN.org. Streaming to you from the indie media studios of the Free Press Network here on YouTube, but also available online at WGRN.org. Plus, listen to us on Columbus, Ohio's two volunteer-run low-power FM radio stations, Fridays at 5.30 p.m. on WGRN 94.1, The Green Renaissance, and Mondays, 5.30 p.m. on WCRS 92.7 and 98.3. We're doing many things here to bring you different points of view. One of these is the other side of the news. And again, just remember, we live stream. Uh, we are the Green Renaissance. And there, our sister station, WCRS, also uh, plays this show, The Other Side of the News. So make sure you listen regularly, be it by stream, uh, be it over the radio itself, which has an incredible signal. And that's it, uh, folks. The show's over. Thank you for turning in, clicking on, sharing us with your like-minded friends. The revolution is on. We'll be back with critical and comical look on the other side of the news next week. Then hatred to mankind Poisoning their brainwashed minds Oh, larger!